Hey, I'm Craig and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about AI and how you can use it to make books. So I've been using AI to create colouring books. I've got some here, for example. So here's a lazy Labrador book. Inside, you can see the quality, if I can get it right, the quality is actually really, really good. So there's a little example of that one. I've done a wrestling mask mandala one. So in here, the, there are mandala inspired wrestling masks. That's when I cut it in. Pretty straightforward. And this is one I've done recently looking at insects, which is quite fun. You have things like beetles, flies, yeah, kind of all the insects, nice butterflies, dragonflies and all of those kind of things. So all of those illustrations, um, yeah, they were made with AI, believe it or not. So each one of those colouring books probably took me about a day, one to two days to make. Uh, kind of completely free, apart from the design skills needed for the covers. A little bit of tinkering within your kind of software that you use to publish and then also what I do is I pay uh, for a fee for mid journey for usage and, and for rights giving me the rights to to publish those as, uh, as coloring books so let me show you how I do it okay so step one might be coming up with an idea if you're struggling there's even AI that you can use for that this is chat GPT it has kind of gone quite viral recently, but it's an AI bot that gives you text. So you give it a command, it will give you something back. So in here, for example, I could write coloring book ideas for kids. So it, I'll close that. But you can kind of put in whatever command you like. So say if you found a niche that was quite interesting, let's say that was football, for example, you could say, give me 10 ideas for football coloring books. Uh, but here are some kind of like quite basic ideas. Uh, and then what you should probably do is take these, search for them in Amazon to make sure there's a demand, um, use your tools, uh, that, that are kind of out there to, for assessing how competitive um, the niches are. So tools like Publisher Rocket is one that I use. Uh, but yeah, that's a really good starting point for trying to find some, you know, for, for AI giving you some ideas. So let's take this one, for example. So we've got an adventure coloring book. Um, we have pirates and treasure hunters and space explorers. So Let's take pirates, for example. So if we go into Amazon and we do pirates coloring book, we can see here that there are quite a lot. The niche does seem to exist. But yeah, it does seem quite saturated. So I might go back here. Pirate coloring book ideas. There we go. And this already AI here is giving us some kind of niched down ideas within that genre. So here we have pirate ships, pirate characters, treasure maps could be, could be quite fun pirate gear underwater scenes is quite fun pirate islands pirate fights and battles humorous scenes so funny pirates that could be quite nice and it even gives you a tip there at the bottom 
So let's go with humorous pirate scenes, just to kind of like try and stand out a little bit. You've kind of got our ideas and our coloring book is going to be funny pirates. So next we go over to mid journey. There are courses out there which show you how to use mid journey. It's a text to image AI tool. This one, you can do a free, you can do like a, a free test on there. Uh, you get so many image searches per month, but if you're kind of serious about it and it works for you, you can pay, I think it's either $10 a month for kind of like a low package. And then $30 a month is your kind of premium package where you get unlimited searches. So to search on here, you do the prompt, which is always imagine. That's kind of telling the AI bot that it needs to imagine what you're uh, feeding it in terms of text. So I'll put coloring, coloring page for kids, funny pirate. And so you can be as descriptive as you want on these, but for now, we'll see what that comes up with. Generally, it might take a minute. Drinks break time, I think. <sighs> oh, little stretch. And as with everything on this, there's, there's um, so much test and learning that you'll need to do. This is a very basic prompt, you know, coloring page for kids, funny pirate. Uh, the results might not be quite what you're looking for. You might need to enter, you know, a bit more information about what the pirate, if, if, if the pirate's got a peg leg, um, what the line drawings like, is it cartoony, is it anime? You know, adding all those kind of elements in, uh, as well as kind of saying what's in the background, adding all those elements in, might help you get a bit closer to what you're looking for. So while we're waiting, I'll try one more. So I'll put simple cartoon. Isolated is a good one to not have a background. I'll do peg leg, cutlass, isolated. Let's see what that comes up with. The first one it's imagining at the moment when it gets to 100%, that means it's finished. And generally what this does is it gives you four images <clears throat> and if you like any of them, you can either create a variation by clicking on the Vs or you can upscale it and create the full size image by clicking the U. So first one, let's have a look what it's done. So you can see straight away, some of these are pretty decent. This one here is quite fun. It's, it's a bit too complicated for kids. This is probably a little bit more this, the, the fourth one is probably a little bit more the kind of complexity you'd, you'd want for this type of book. Uh, and maybe you're lacking a little bit of the humor in this that we were looking for. Um, but as you can see, it's a really, really good start for such a basic command. All, all we said on this was coloring page for kids, funny pirate. That's it. Uh, and it's, it's come out like this. Let's see what the more detailed one comes up with. Uh, and we can compare. And Mid Journey has been working in the background and yeah, these are so much more like what we're looking for. The prompt for this was coloring page for kids, cartoon pirates, give it some stylistic uh, direction. I've put here, we've got simple cartoon style, peg leg, cutlass, isolated. So you've got the peg leg command hasn't really necessarily come through, but they're all holding a cutlass. These are quite kind of frowny looking, which isn't quite what we're looking for. In here, I've put cartoon pirate oops, which has kind of created this a little bit more of a funny character. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, some really good options here for starting points. Let's say the fourth one we liked, but it wasn't quite right. We click variation of number four. So one, two, three, four. What this is going to do is give us four more images very, very closely to our original image that came up here. And again, we play the waiting game. <laughs> but while we're waiting, isn't it just absolutely amazing what AI can do? You could tell it pretty much anything that is uh, appropriate because there's, you know, you need to be 
PG thirteen on on these things, which is you know completely understandable and probably for the best. Let's face it. So you know, the sky's the limit with especially with coloring books. Like you could come up with the wackiest idea ever. You could come up with you know cats who are ballerinas on alien planets using pogo sticks to jump around <laughs> and you could create a coloring book of that because you tell the AI to create something sometimes it's a little hit and miss but you just need to keep playing around with the prompts and then when you find a good prompt prompt um, you know you just keep going and you keep getting those images uh, and yeah, and you can create colouring images, which is absolutely incredible. So here we can see, here's the four variations. So this was the original image. Um, you know, he's missing a right eye here. And these are the variations. So as you can see, this one's so much more closer. You've got the right eye. Um, not absolutely perfect, but it's pretty good. So I would say we'd be happy with that. We would click u for upscale and it would create our final image here's one i made earlier these are my 40 images or there might be a few more in there but let's say these are my 40 images that i made for my incredible insects book so each one of these was made via mid-journey i might have done you know a couple of hundred prompts to try and get the best ones that i could find uh, each one would have a different prompt so uh, for example, you know, this one, I tried something a little bit different. I, tr I tried entering like circular, psychedelic, mandala commands to try and get something a little bit interesting and unique. Um, but as, as you can see, often the outputs aren't completely perfect. So as you can see here, if we zoom in, you can see here, there's just a little kind of line which isn't perfect and here the line's not completely joined so what i would say is you either need a fair bit of patience with with the ai prompts um, and only then export the ones that are perfect or you need to take them into photoshop and just fix them up a little bit which you know is uh what, what i tend to do so that i'm not missing out so once you've got your 40 40 images there you've got them downloaded they tend to be you know they're, they're square unless you set the aspect ratio to something different um, but these are all square for me and as you can see on here uh, they're 1024 by 1024 pixels so they're not super huge but they're big enough for what we're, we're doing once you've got your images uh, you create your document however you do this so i use adobe indesign i just feel like i've got access to the adobe package so i should be using it um, and i love the kind of pages that you can set so you can set structures and it, it makes it quick to update in indesign basically it's just very quick to format um, and i like it <laughs> so this is what my insects books looks like digitally um, I've inserted all of my 40 images on here. Each one, I've actually put a bounding box around it just to make it nice and clean. Um, but yeah, so all 40 images. So I basically created a new document with 81 pages. For me, I like to leave uh, a page on the left to prevent bleed through because the, the, pa the pages are, are decent on Amazon, but they're not like completely thick. So I always like to leave a spare page on each side. Um, and then it's 81 pages because the extra page at the end, I always have a little uh, little ad in there so that people can check out some of my other coloring books. Once you've got your book put together, you export it as a PDF and then you need to create your cover so here's one again i made earlier um, hopefully you know how to get the specs for cover but if not you just search on amazon you can download a template you basically say i want this is an 8.5 by 8.5 inch book 
that's 81 pages long. So you can go to the cover template creator, I think it is on Amazon, uh, tell it your specs and it will give you the size. And then, yeah, you need to create your cover. So this is what I've done for the insects. I think it looks quite nice. I always make sure that when it's thumbnail, when it's a thumbnail view, which it is often on Amazon, you can still read, read it. It's a nice big text, nice colors, quite bold. Um, but hopefully you can still see it's a coloring book. Um, and that's the kind of style I'm going for. Yeah, and then once that's made, we go to our Amazon KDP dashboard. We enter the details on the paperback. So you need to enter your title, your description, your keywords, all of that. Um, I will click get a free KDP ISBN, meaning I don't have to pay for one, which is fantastic. Set your ink and paper type. For me, I always do black and white interior with white paper. It's a coloring book, it makes sense to have white paper. Set your trim size. So for me, it was 8.5 by 8.5. Mine was, it's not edge to edge, so I've, I, I've got no need for a bleed. But if you're doing kind of full page um, coloring books with patterns, then you might need to do the bleed PDF only. Uh, for coloring books, I quite like the glossy finish. Uh, and then here you upload your manuscripts, which is your PDF of your coloring book. Uh, and here you upload your your cover and then you can launch the previewer to make sure it looks okay save and continue and um, yeah you, you set your cost you should probably do a little bit of research into what other people are pay, you know what the other books are, are, are listed for so I've gone kind of fairly premium on uh, mine I've gone 8.99 in the US giving me 324 for every book uh, and in the UK 799 and again in Europe 799 and that is it and then you just hope that Amazon starts to do its thing and start to sell it so if I search insect coloring book there we go so this is an ad um, to get to get me up there so I won't click on it <laughs> but I think I think looking here I think mine stands out, it looks nice. Oh, and there we go, there's the uh, there's the organic version as well. So it's, it's not far off. I hope you found this useful. Uh, it's absolutely incredible what AI can do. It's, it's scary, you know, for some, it's taking away some of the creativity, but what it does for us book publishers is it just opens up a world of possibilities. Um, yeah, so if, if this is something that you think you're gonna try or you know, you, you've already created some coloring books using AI, or perhaps you're thinking of some other ways to use AI, you know, let me know down in the comments. It would be lovely to hear from you. Cool. So that's it for this episode. And I hope you join me again. Cheers.